Well, good morning and welcome to this week. Hey, Scott. Hey, Joe, how's it going? I'm uh, good, good. Good morning, Revolution, to um, everyone. <laughs> um, happy to uh, be here with you. Um, I want to remind you that to share this uh, uh, program with your friends right now, you can do it by going to the window in which this program appears and click on, what is it called, Scott, again? Start a watch party. Watch party. Start a watch party. If you want to have a party with the Communist Party, start a watch party right now. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. <laughs> Do it so that uh, you can share us with your friends. There's enough to go around. Share, share the wealth. <laughs> share the, that's what we're all about. Sharing the wealth, you know. We produce it. Might as well share it. So your president is in uh, was in, is in Europe. Was Who's he? president? Ain't yeah. my president. You know, I was marching out there. Not my president. I remember. Uh, crossing Sixth Avenue, and there were thousands of young people marching down the street. And I grabbed a young woman's hand, and we marched together for about a block. Wonderful nice. feeling. Shout, not my president. Um, and uh, so he's in. He's in for the what is it? The seventieth anniversary. Seventy fifth. Seventy fifth anniversary of D Day. Of D Day. Um, and uh, which was a great event, uh, but it looks like the United States and uh, single-handedly won the Second World War. Is that what happened? Uh, not, <laughs> not, not in our uh, in our knowledge of history, which is you know based on facts uh, rather than oh no, propaganda. not facts. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, uh, yeah, uh, you know it, it's really you know as John Wojcik points out in a, in a People's World article. Um, from yesterday, uh, the, we can't overlook the role of the Soviet Union in, um, in defeating fascism and in defeating Hitler. Uh, yeah. if they, if they hadn't, um, stopped the advance of, of Hitler's forces and, and bound his armies up in the East, uh, it would have never been possible to land, um, on the beaches of Normandy and, and begin the push. Stalingrad, uh, man, Stalingrad. That's where the war was won, isn't it? Three quarters of the German divisions were centered in the Soviet Union, and, yep. and uh, most of them around Stalingrad. And that's where, you know, they were defeated. The Nazis were defeated by a combination of the resilience of the uh, Soviet people and the cold, freezing temperatures of yeah. the Soviet. Uh, of Which the had defeated uh, armies from the West before. Yeah. Um, so it's, but this is, we should point out, this is not a, it's not a competition, like, you know, who, who did more, who's better. The point was, you know, this was a massive united effort uh, to defeat fascism. Um, and even as we're thinking about the, the immensity of the sacrifice required, we should also think about what was happening before the Second World War broke out. Beginning in 1936, the Soviet Union, the US Communist Party, uh, all the parties of the Comintern were calling for a, a massive united front of all democratic countries and democratic forces against fascism. So concretely that would have meant, you know, not selling arms, not selling trucks, not selling chemicals and oil to Germany, to Spain, to Italy, to Japan, um, in hopes of preventing a war that ultimately took you know, an enormous, unprecedented, and unequaled in history toll um, on. Um, but why um, would they want to defeat it? I mean, they they didn't Churchill say right after the revolution that they wanted to strangle the Bolshevik baby in its bed? I mean, absolutely. If you, I was just reading about the you know the period from 1936 until the uh, until uh, the U.S. joined the war uh, this morning, and the the campaign of red baiting that was conducted by the Republican Party of the, of the day and its sort of fascist allies, the German-American Bund, the um, Union Party, uh, was, was intense. So any attempt to, to push for uh, peace, any attempt to isolate Germany or Italy was, was portrayed as, you know, 
the United States falling under the control of uh, Jewish Bolshevism or, you know, uh, Roosevelt was accused of waving the red flag over the White House when he- But wasn't it a class policy? I mean, 21 countries intervened 10 years before that, you know, to yeah. the Russian Civil War, you know, yeah. on the side of the white forces. Reaction, yeah. White in this case, I don't mean white people, I mean- the, White banners. Right, right. And uh, and that was that was both Democrats and Republicans. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there was, um, you know, even the whole time, even among the, you know, supposedly uh, democratic forces in the in the ruling class, there was an understanding and, and a, uh, an agreement that, you know, the Soviet Union would be dealt with as soon as the as soon as the war was over, which, you know, they didn't hesitate. Uh, but you were right. I mean, the big lesson that one can draw from that is that you need a united policy against the extreme right and uh, today alt-right neo-fascist danger. And um, that you don't wait until fascism is already in place to start fighting it. It's too right? late, baby. Yeah. That happens, right? I mean, you know, you're in big trouble. And, the, and this is a delusion that's a strong word, but yeah, it's a delusion that we see sometimes on the left as well, like to say, oh, you know, the fascists are here. The only solution is to, you know, arm ourselves and, you know, no, fascism is not here yet. No. It's but not. it is menacing. And we need, you know, vigilance and, and unity and a massive push led by the working class and by oppressed people for democracy. That is the only way. And you got to turn out to vote in order to do that because the question is, every single instance is a question of state power, who wields it and who is in a, in a position to influence it. Mm -hmm. And in that respect, the Democratic Party is getting ready to begin its first presidential uh, debate uh, on CNBC in a couple of weeks. And um, it looks like your homeboy, Mr. Biden, is still in the. Keep calling him that. Who's your homeboy, man? I mean, hey, so he's he's from Scranton. I live in New York State now. I'm a yeah. I'm a New Yorker. <laughs> yeah, but you were born and raised in Pennsylvania. Uh, that is true. It's in your blood. Don't deny it. <laughs> and uh, which is a great thing. Pennsylvania, Keystone State's a great state. You know, we we uh, sure it is. We're neighbors, the Buckeye <laughs> and, and the Keystone State. And now, well, New York, yeah, we're still neighbors. So. Um, but Biden is, uh, is running uh, and he's in the lead and he just reversed his position on the Hyde Amendment. And if I'm not mistaken, the Hyde Amendment prohibited federal funding for abortions. Isn't that right? Yes, for any, um, any abortion services. And so he's done a flip, he's done a 180, which is a good thing. Um, and is it is a testament to you know, people tend to think of, of political candidates as having, you know, a certain set position, like, you know, Biden is this, Clinton was this, Bernie is this, you know, so-and-so is this, but they, they shift in response to the way things move in the, in the mass movement. Hmm. Um, and it wasn't just that, that Biden woke up one morning and had a, a revelation, it was that there's this, this sentiment now that it is unacceptable for a political candidate to claim to represent, you know, uh, the rights of, of women and, and uh, a progressive stance and be and be uh, in support of the Hyde Amendment. You well, there's also this tremendous attack on women's reproductive rights, you know, from the right, all of these states are outlawing uh, abortion and looks like in Missouri in a couple of days, you know, there won't be one single place for a woman to uh, get an abortion and, and uh, it's happening in several states. So there's a coordinated effort to make this a wedge issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, which um, as, as uh, Chauncey Robinson um, points out recently in the people's world, this is a working class issue. Um, it, it is a, an issue that primarily affects uh, uh, women of the working class because, you know, uh, abortion has always been accessible to to wealthy women who could travel to other countries. Yeah. Uh, not to mention that the 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 rights of women is an issue for the unity of our class and 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 for its power. Absolutely, absolutely. 
is we have to fight as men to uh, uh, defend that right, you know, and, uh, and defend it we will. And uh, this is uh, Pride Month, you know, and uh, so we want to say happy Pride Month to all of our LGBTQ uh, friends and, and comrades. Uh, and that's another key issue yep. uh, from which we must not retreat in, in defending uh, their rights to marriage, to health care, to jobs, uh, to every single democratic right that heterosexual people have. Because, and this is, and you know, even the, you know, we see the importance of it kind of reflected in how vicious the Republican Party has been about it. Um, you know, that, that it's, they've taken it since the 1980s as like a, a core issue uh, for rallying their, the social conservative section of their base. Um, right, right, right. So uh, now the, it, I was just looking at the uh, results of some of the polls and, uh, it looks like in Texas, even right now, if the election was held today, Biden would beat Trump. Um, and I think uh, in Texas, uh, Elizabeth Warren was coming in a close second. I may be wrong about that, but she was up there. Uh, either she was second and, and Bernie was third or mm -hmm. Bernie was second and she was third. But then in Michigan, Trump is getting his butt whooped you know, in the polls, uh, Biden is uh, in front, but uh, I think Biden and, 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 and Mr. Sanders are almost tied in the great state of Michigan. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not surprising given the, the level of betrayal. You know, a president who came to power talking a populist line about being the greatest jobs president uh, America's ever had, and then his solution to, to uh, plant closures and and job losses is to go and um, try to bribe companies to to keep a few jobs here. No, people right. recognize how Jared workers time and time uh, again. So these issues are, are going to continue to be in front of us uh, over the next period, uh, and uh, and we have to be out there in the front line defending them. And and by the way. Uh, with respect to that, we have a, a meme this week calling for the impeachment of Mr. Trump. Time to keep the pressure on. It'll be a big teaching moment should the House move in that direction. But let Nancy Pelosi, the speaker, says she don't want to impeach him. She wants the boy in jail. Well, of, there's uh, currently one way to, to, to start that process, uh, Madam Speaker. So. Let's get on it. You know, and the other meme we have is is uh, uh, celebrating Pride Month. You know, uh, calling for revolutionary pride, and uh, so we encourage all of our friends and comrades to share it, get the get the uh, message out and around. Now, the Communist Party is convention is just a few weeks away in Chicago. Are you excited? I'm extremely excited. Wow. In fact, the, the New York State uh, Committee of the party is, is meeting tomorrow uh, with its elected delegates. Um, I'm one of them. Uh, to, Congratulations. So we're gonna, we're gonna discuss um, the business before the convention. And you know, uh, the way, the way uh, democracy in the party works, delegates are not just elected to go and you know, vote their conscience at the thing. They, they are delegates who represent um, their state, their district. Uh, so we're um, we're going to figure out what our delegation, what approach our delegation will be. Right. Uh, will be taking. Right. And uh, there's some big issues uh, before the uh, convention. We'll be discussing a new Communist Party program, mm -hmm. uh, which has been uh, drafted and uh, circulated, and there's been a big debate about it. And and there've been a number of other big issues de de debated in the uh, pre-convention uh, discussion. Uh, and you've just posted a, a, a series of articles that came in under the wire. Yeah, uh, so what we, we've, uh, we we're, now, we're now closed for, for submissions. You can still comment uh, on uh, cpusa.org on our articles. Um, and on Facebook, you can comment on Facebook. 
and a, you know, a number of really, uh, I think, um, important and, and, and a hard hitting pieces, uh, uh, including one that, that you co-authored with Jarvis Tyner, Joe, about the uh, African-American national question. Um, do you want to just uh, give us a taste of that? Well, it's, uh, it's an important issue because the fight against uh, racism and what we call national oppression is ongoing, you know, and, uh, under imperialism. Uh, reaction uh, grows and racial oppression uh, grows in intensity. And the United States is uh, still, you know, uh, the most segregated country on the planet. I don't think there's any uh, a question of, about that. Black and Latino unemployment is double the rate of whites, uh, particularly for young people. And so the uh, issue here is what is the main path in the uh, a fight for e equality? And um, at one point, the party had uh, the position called self-determination for the Black Belt Nation. And that was under the premise that there were a series of counties in the Deep South extending from Florida through uh, Maryland where you had uh, Black majorities. And uh, they, they were under the uh, distinct uh, impression, actually it was more than an impression, the distinct fact that uh, in these sections of the South, uh, 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 African Americans had no rights, political or economic, that whites were bound to respect, and that the conditions of economic and political life were horrific. And so they, they said, therefore, if you don't want to treat us equally, you know, we'll do it ourselves, you know, we need our own independent. Uh, but conditions have changed and there was a great migration from the deep south uh, up to the Midwest and North. Um, and so that slogan uh, is no longer applicable, if it ever was, because you also have to consider that uh, segregation uh, was a policy of the ruling class. And uh, you know, even with separate but but uh, uh, equal, and that would, have been, that would have been, in a certain sense, a concession. Exactly to that kind of apartheid-like policy, you know. And, and, could, and could one expect uh, uh, in the United States in the nineteen twenties uh, and thirties a um, an African American, independent African American uh, nation uh, to exist within these borders? Which would have meant under conditions of capitalism that it would have been equivalent to a, a Bantustan in South yeah. Africa or a reservation that uh, the Native American people are forced to live in uh, uh, presently under a socialist you know, of, uh, conditions that would have been, of course, very different. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but here's the point. The main point of uh, our article is that the fight for equality, uh, uh, full economic, political, social equality in the United States uh, has taken the form as practiced by black people themselves as fighting for equal rights in every single aspect. And that that self-determination uh, has been expressed in that particular way, you know, in the fight for full equality. And that was the main point that we're uh, trying to make in, in, in that article. And so we end, hope that you read it. And you end with a really strong uh, point as well that I'm gonna try and cite from memory because I think that the way it's phrased is good, but you say that um, uh, the fight for equality, the success of that fight will determine whether or not we can get to socialism. Absolutely, so absolutely. Because the class has yeah. to be united, you know, and without a united class, uh, socialism won't be possible. But if you don't address the systemic uh, issues arising from institutionalized racism, if you don't fight for, for example, affirmative action to make up for past grievances, if you don't support reparations in some form, you know, uh, black workers uh, uh, are not gonna be convinced that uh, socialism is a viable uh, solution. They won't 
be convinced that, that the level of unity that's necessary for bringing about of such a revolution is possible. Why should we do that if you don't support our demand? Yeah. That's, that's the it's, it's a question of, of what, what, the old slogan, an injury to one is an injury to all. If we take yes, that seriously, not just you know, what happens on the job site, it's if, if there is a section of our, our, our class that is facing this, this extra oppression, of course we have to unite in, in you know, to, to, to end that. Mark said it long ago, Labor in the white skin cannot be free so long as labor in the black skin is branded. And there are many different forms that that brand has taken since the defeat of chattel, chattel slavery, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, the, the fact that, uh, you know, the majority of people who are in prison are black and brown is an example of that brown, uh, brand. The fact that infant mortality rate is much higher for African Americans and Latinos is an example of that brand, and we can go on down the uh, line. Now, there are some other articles that have been posted. You want to give us a yeah? Um, so we have a, a report on the the housing struggle in New York State, which is really shaping up um, into a, a major political issue. Um, we have uh, a piece arguing that uh, social Democrats are not the the enemy right now. So against the tendency of, of some uh, communists and, and revolutionaries to say, oh, you know, Bernie is really just a reformist or like that's that's not the issue right now. That's what the that's what the piece argues. Uh, another piece uh, about the um, dialectical uh, relationship between different uh, struggles. So arguing that the um, the struggle against the extreme right, uh, the struggle against uh, monopoly capitalism and the struggle against capitalism as a whole develop uh, interdependently and at different levels at different moments, um, but that uh, separating them firmly into states. Is that the article by Cameron Orr? That is by Cameron Orr, one of our New York State comrades. Okay. Um, uh, or a couple other pieces as well. Oh, uh, a great uh, assessment and sort of look forward to the, the um, communication work of the people's world and, uh, and the website uh, in the new period after the convention. Um, the bells are ringing, somebody. Bell, bells are ringing. Okay. Uh, it sounds like there have been a lot of great submissions. And so we encourage you to go to our website at cpusa.org, check them out, comment on them. And then we've been getting a lot of uh, uh, comments uh, lately, uh, it was kind of slow at the beginning of the uh, pre-convention discussion period, but it's picked up significantly, and that's a that's a uh, great thing. And that's what that's what we're kind of looking to to extend uh, after the convention, trying to figure out how to make sort of uh, discussion a key uh, a key part of uh, of our work. And speaking of key parts of our work, you know, the developments in the working class and the trade union movement are, really are the basis of all of our activities. And uh, there's been a development in uh, West Virginia, an attempt to outlaw the right of teachers to strike. Is yeah. that going on? You want to talk a little bit? No, it's a, a, um, a multi-pronged uh, attack. Uh, it includes um, shifting money from, from public schools to charters, uh, and to uh, vouchers for um, students attending private schools. Um, so a defunding attempt and also um, limits on teachers, uh, basically removing teachers' right to strike. Um, West Virginia wouldn't be the first state uh, to do that. Um, but this is a, it's a clear response to the, the wave of uh, teacher activism, the, the red for ed uh, movement, I think, as, it, as it's called in Arizona. Um, uh, and it's, I don't think West Virginia teachers or the people of West Virginia are going to stand for it. You know, we saw West Virginia is a right to work state under, under right wing control. But we saw when the teachers went out, communities supported them uh, massively. Um, so it's a, this legislation is a, a slap in the face to the teachers and the students. Uh, and the communities of West Virginia who are fighting for um, fair school funding and for really for the people's democratic control over um, 
their, their public resources, their education system. Well, we express our solidarity and support for the right of teachers in West Virginia and all workers throughout the country to uh, strike. And, um, you know, I don't think the labor movement is going to stand for it. Yeah. You know? um, and in fact, the uh, labor movement, the developments in the AFL-CIO are moving in a good direction, including in the uh, uh, building trades, you know, among skilled workers, there's a new militancy taking place there and a new recognition, a new level of class consciousness and militancy. And uh, that, bodes, that bodes well for the uh, future. And we're looking forward to hearing from our comrades who are working in the trade union movement, what they have to say at the convention. Oh, somebody's really trying to get in touch with me. You got to silence this. We'll be putting forward uh, at the uh, convention. Well, we're going to let you go, Scott. We've been at it for a while. Thanks, everybody, for uh, watching, for being with us uh, uh, this morning. We'll be back uh, next Friday as uh, we'll be just a week or two away from the convention. Yeah with more from uh, this week at CPUSA. So take All right. care. See you later. All right, bye now. And say once again, good morning to that beautiful daughter of yours. Can't, can't leave without saying that. Will, uh, will do.